Hey guys, how's it going? Tears back again with episode number 7 of the Spurs career mode and we start this one off as well as the last one with a game in Europe. It is the second game in the group stage in the Europa League. We've got Malmo away after previously playing Genk at home and picking up a nice victory. So we're hopefully we can continue our good form in Europe. We've got a good start here with Carl Norton pushing the ball down the right hand side. Unfortunately was uh, cutting his shot across the goalkeeper and unfortunate not to get it inside that far post. And Jermaine Defoe has another good effort and uh, the goalkeeper makes a good save but Chadley's picked the ball up on the edge of the box so he's going to try and work his magic finds Jermaine Defoe again inside the box this time Defoe whips it and just can't quite find the target and uh, we're definitely on top here as you can tell and uh, we were actually able to take the lead here through Paulinho picks the ball up off the defender who's uh, a little bit lax in possession and uh, slots the ball tidily underneath the goalkeeper into the back of the net in the 41st minute to give us a 1-0 lead as we headed in to the break at half time so we were definitely on top and uh, a decent performance as well, creating chances, playing some nice football. And now uh, we headed into the second half full of confidence. But the next, the next 45 minutes just weren't the same. And uh, they were actually going to pick up a penalty here. Now I'm not, I just don't know whether this is a penalty or not. I'll leave the, I'll show you the replay now. It pop up on screen. Is there contact there? Does he? I think he just clips the shin of the defender, and then is off balance as uh, as the defender comes through and that makes him fall over but I, ju I don't know I just can't tell and uh, unfortunately Friedel can't even go the right way and the penalty goes into the back of there even if he had gone the right way to be honest he wasn't going to save that it was a fantastic penalty and uh, unfortunately we only pick up a point away at Malmö but four points from the opening two games in the Europa League is still decent that does put us top of the group so hopefully we can continue that good form but we are having some problems with uh, with fixture congestion. If you were subscribed to me last year on FIFA 13, you'll have seen that uh, we had a problem with a Bayer Leverkusen game in the uh, Deutsche Pokal, being the semi-final of which being played 24 hours after a quarter-final game in the Champions League against Barcelona. And there is no, there's no way to to uh, to cancel games or ask for a postponement. And we've got two games within two days after having a, a game three days previously we've gone playing uh, Thursday, Sunday, Tuesday which is just ridiculous when there's n another week the other side of, uh, of the, the third game the Cardiff game to, to play that in between the uh, the next game I think it's Aston Villa and uh, you know why not just if you could postpone the game or request a postponement and give a reason a bit like look we've got these fixes are too congested can we move this game back to the weekend or back to Thursday or back to Friday play it on the Friday night or something but you can't do that and it's so incredibly frustrating thankfully we've got a decent sized squad and we can cope with it but uh, if we had a tiny squad and we're on a shoestring budget etc then it really would become a problem but we came very very close here against West Ham striking the post and then Sandro scores an abs absolute rocket in the 40th minute to put us 1-0 up around about the same time that we scored against Malmo incidentally and uh, he doesn't score many goals Sandro but even in real life whenever he does score it tends to be a screamer and uh, it was so just here that was a fantastic shot into the top right hand corner as we go 1-0 up at half time and uh, we're winning in another London derby there are so many uh, London derbies this year with uh, West Ham, Chelsea and Arsenal so we're really looking forward to it now someone please tell me what Jan Vertonghen is doing there I pass the ball out to him there's nobody near him and he's just completely ignored the ball I just oh I was so so furious when that happened so uh, I made some changes to try and uh, try and change the game get it back in our favour Jermaine Defoe and Nasser Chadley come on and the game did change just not necessarily in the way that I may have wanted it to. Matty Jarvis is going to slot through Joe Cole here. I miss the tackle and uh, Joe Cole runs past the next couple of defenders, slots the ball underneath the goalkeeper and we actually go 2-1 down. So uh, I was really, really up against it here. 2-1 down at home against West Ham and it wasn't until stoppage time that Cole Walker is going to whip the ball in. Jermaine Defoe is going to go up. It's going to be a good save and the referee gives a penalty and again, I'm not too sure what it's for. You'll be able to see from the replay, Joey O'Brien goes up with his arm but it doesn't appear to strike his arm unless the referee is just given a foul for uh, the arm in the face. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just a pixel thing and uh, the ball did hit his hand but you know you can't see it because of the, the difference in pixels between his arm and the ball. But nonetheless, I left it to uh, David Alaba. He's uh, got the best penalty taking uh, stats in the team at present because uh, Soldado had been taken off. So um, unfortunately, we're only able to take a point from that home game against West Ham but we did only just scrape a point 
So uh, we, I guess we have to be thankful that we did get the penalty in the last minute. But just two days later, we have another game against Cardiff. A lot of rotation for this one, as you can see. A very, very weak or weaker side than the one that came up against West Ham. As you can see on screen, we are sixth in the league. Five points away from top, but with a game in hand. And Chelsea have a game in hand as well, with a goal difference being plus one. So if we could make the most of this game away at Cardiff, then uh, hopefully we could rise up the table and get ourselves back towards that top spot. But Chadley here is the first shot blocked. Unfortunately, can't quite get the proper connection on the second shot, and it is an easy take for David Marshall in goal. And uh, Brad Friedel, again, himself making a good save from... Uh, from the shot from Cardiff then another one here from Brayford is going to get rifled in and it's just going to go past that far top corner really really fortunate that one didn't find the next I don't think Frieda would have got there had it been going into the stanchion but uh, the ball across from uh, from the central midfielder across to Eric Lamella he's going to cut inside he's going to try and whip it with his left foot he does have a very good left foot unfortunately isn't quite accurate enough and the goalkeeper is able to come out and pick it off mid-flight so we went in at half time at nil nil but again we're creating chances that's one thing we can say we're doing consistently throughout this series is connect is creating a lot of chances and David Marshall was definitely at the top of his game much like he was in real life actually against Spurs to uh, to keep us at bay for the majority of the game you can see Jermaine Defoe having a good shot well saved and then uh, Cardiff are actually going to come on the attack themselves here going to head the ball in I uh, went to clear it with Defoe and rather than pressing B, I pressed and held X, and he got tackled, and rather than trying to clear the ball, it, there was such a delay between him clearing the ball, or him me pressing the button for him to clear the ball, and the tackle going in, that he went for a slide tackle, and uh, that really, really annoyed me, because uh, they picked up a penalty, he had the chance to go 1-0 up in the 70th minute, after all our domination, Peter Rod and Wingy is going to take it, strikes the inside of the post, and somehow, that goes across the goal mouth, and out for a goal kick. I've left a couple of replays in here just so you can see how close that is. It's got to be one of the most unlucky penalties I've ever seen in my life. That is just inches away from creeping in the far post as well. Really, really spectacular scenes away at Cardiff here. But uh, we push on into uh, the last 15 minutes. Defoe weirdly takes that one on his heel, knocks it around the defender, gets to it to uh, gets a return to it to uh, to have the shot. David Marshall again makes a good save, but unfortunately for him this time, it does drop to Eric Lamella, who uh, shows fantastic technique with a, a swivelled volley to pop the ball into the back of the net to give us a 1-0 lead in the 78th minute. A well-deserved 1-0 lead, no less. And uh, that was actually going to be enough to give us the victory, as you can see Another look at that technique from Lamera. Absolutely wonderful with the the, the way all on his right foot, swivelling his hips. And uh, that gave us the 1-0 lead that we so desperately needed. Because uh, we do need these points to keep up the pressure at the top of the league table. And uh, Cardiff were absolutely uh, devastated. As you can well imagine, after after performing so well defensively, to be undone by a deflection is really, really heartbreaking. But as you can see, still five points off the top with that game in hand. Chelsea uh, Chelsea lost their, uh, their game, so uh, we have actually pushed a lot further ahead of them. And we're only a point behind Manchester City, although they too do have a game in hand on the team that are top. So that is going to wrap up this particular episode of the Tottenham career. My guys, thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. Of course, subscribe if you haven't already. There will be links in the description and on the annotation on screen over the subscribe button to do so. There will be an annotation screen as well over the play button to the previous episode if you did miss it. And of course, feel free to follow me on Twitter at Chesnoy Gaming. There will be a link in the description to that as well. So that is going to wrap this up from, uh, from me, guys. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.